Good morning, everyone, except for our friends in Europe. Uh, good afternoon or evening uh, to you folks. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do at Vessen and how we fit into the value chain. Uh, our mission is really enabling quantum commercialization. Let's grow the quantum economy, and that means getting quantum out of the lab. So the quantum potential, sort of why we're all here, pick your big consulting firm. They all have reports on how big the economy of quantum is going to be. Here's a recent report from McKinsey saying it's going to be north of $100 billion. Uh, we divide this up into four different verticals, computing, networking, timing, and sensing. Uh, I'd like to point out that the Department of Commerce, the United States Department of Commerce, did a report a couple of years ago saying the economic impact of GPS, which is enabled by atomic clocks, i.e. quantum clocks, has already contributed greater than a trillion dollars of economic activity just to the U.S. It's real. Quantum potential is real. The challenge, of course, as we're looking forward, is that it's constrained. Most of the quantum architectures and quantum systems require photonics. It requires photons to interact with the atoms or molecules that have to be very precisely controlled. And scalable and deployable solutions, they just don't exist right now. Most of it's being done with sort of R&D grade equipment. Well, this is where Vessen comes in. So we really break down the enabling building blocks into frequency combs, which is a specialized type of pulse laser, lasers, which is a CW, continuous wave laser for in interrogating atoms and molecules, and then controls, which are a big piece of it. These are the electronics, the physics packages, the things you wrap around and make the photons do what they need to do. So a little bit about us. Uh, we're a quantum team that has both what I call reference level quantum expertise, one of my co-founders, he was a postdoc that built the original experiment for Eric Cornell that did the first atomic BEC. He made that famous plot in the upper left. Our CTO uh, was Jan Hall's last graduate student who won the Nobel Prize for frequency combs. He worked on some early frequency comb work. So we understand how hard it is. We understand the physics. And then we also combine that with a commercialization manufacturing track record. We are at our heart a manufacturing company. Now, Quantum solutions are deployable. They can leave the lab. We know it because we're doing it. And so, you know, we've got hardware that's in space, that's been deployed at sea, demonstrated in air. We don't have anything on an F-150 yet, but it's going there. Uh, it's hard, uh, not gonna lie to you, uh, but we're, we're ready, we're up to the challenge. And so we are selling, we're seeing growing customer and partner pull. We sell to the researchers, that's where the big market is now. And so these are government players, FFRDCs, quantum labs. We have hundreds of customers we sell all over the world. Uh, quantum primes, these are the DOD primes. Uh, we sell and partner with most of them. And then of course the, the system level folks at the top. And so the folks who are building the quantum computers, the networks, the sensing, the timing. We're still a small company. We operate out of about 17,000 square feet in Colorado. We got a 3,000 square foot production clean room, uh, but we're growing. And so a little bit more detail, yeah, the frequency combs, these are self-referenced. You know, they can be atom tagged. We've got units that are operating 24-7 in fielded environments. Very proud of that. Our lasers, we have ultra narrow line with solutions, atom referenced, wavelength agile. And then our controls, things like ultra low noise, electronic sub-shot noise, current drivers, offset phase locking. And then you wrap that all around advanced packaging to make it be deployable. And so for quantum enabling solutions, you know, here's sort of a, a, a graphic I like to show. These things start in a laboratory environment on a big vibration stabilized table. There is Ted Hench's first self-reference frequency comb. Uh, we take that and we turn it into laboratory products that accelerate quantum R&D, and we sell those to the laboratory and R&D environment. And then we take it one step further into an OEM module that is for deployed quantum. And so when I say deployed, so here's an example of... Uh, Here's our Gen 3 frequency comb. It's quite small, uh, and we're beating the hell out of these things. We're putting them in a, through aggressive temperature regimes, aggressive shock and vibe regimes, and not just surviving, but operating and maintaining the performance, required performance in that environment. And so I'm, I'm proud of that. And so this is what's going to be required for quantum, the quantum economy to realize its potential. We have similar things on CW lasers, not just the pulse lasers. So, you know, there is Wolfgang Ketterle's lab at MIT for the first uh, BEC. You know, we now shrink that down and we not only all the optics, but the electronics to make it simpler, to make the research simpler. And then you take all of it and you wrap it into a little gold box to get it in OEM deployed. 
and we've got customers that are doing cold atom systems that have been, uh, again, shipped all over the world. And so it is happening. So in terms of the value chain, this echoes something that Mark had at the beginning. So the systems players are at the top, the people building the quantum computers, the atomic clocks, the quantum networks, the quantum sensors. Those are our customers. We manufacture the subsystems. I think of them as the building blocks, the combs, the lasers, controls that help enable these systems. And we are engineering these systems both for an R&D environment and a deployed environment. And of course, to make this system, we require components. And so we work with partners to buy things like picks and detectors and laser diodes and gain media and advanced optical and other materials. And of course, advanced electronics. All of these things are enabled to go into our subsystems that enable the quantum economy and for quantum to leave the lab. We're actively looking for key suppliers, partners, and customers to expand our solutions for Quantum 2.0. Uh, here's our contact info. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we like partnering with folks. It helps accelerate timelines. And that's it. Thanks, Mark.